In this video, we're taking this old Suzuki and turning it into a budget soft rotor. This is a 2004 Suzuki Vitara. It's a small body on frame SUV with a proper four wheel drive and low range transfer case. This one is an automatic with a 2.5 V6 engine that will offer me a good increase in fuel economy over the nine miles per gallon I get out of my camper van. The goal with this build is to have a winter capable adventurous runaround that I can take on shorter trips or even tow it behind my camper van on longer trips to have a fun compact rig to take out and explore the places that are inaccessible to a lumbering nine and a half foot tall van. The second goal is to keep this whole project affordable. I paid only $800 for the Suzuki as it sits and honestly I could probably leave it as it is and be fairly happy with it. But what fun is a stock vehicle? So I set myself a budget of $1,500 to increase the capabilities and the enjoyment factor from this plucky little soft rotor. So let's put in some parts orders and get to work. Installing these things couldn't be simpler. You don't even need to remove the wheels. Simply remove the plastic hub cover, a few bolts, and the new hubs more or less directly swap over. My kit was missing the gasket that seals the hub body to the mating surface, so I used my go-to sealant, which is a Nissan brand gasket maker, which you can get from a Nissan dealer or from Amazon. I'll put a link in the pinned comment. To be fair, this is not a particularly critical modification to make, however, it does come with some benefits. From the factory, the Vitara's front axles are permanently engaged with the wheel hubs at all times. This provides the convenience of being able to shift into four-wheel drive on the fly, however, it does mean added wear on the front axles and diff, even when not using four-wheel drive. Being able to disengage the front axles with these manual hubs will reduce wear on the front end, but also help return some MPGs we're sure to lose after our other modifications. Something I've learned over the years is that it's not lack of four-wheel drive or all-wheel drive that's going to limit you when you're exploring these back roads, but actual ground clearance. And I've done a fair bit of exploring in some ill-equipped vehicles, and you'd be surprised what you can get away with, with just a little bit better ground clearance. The first thing I ordered for this project was a lift kit. I ordered this 2-inch lift kit from Street Rays on eBay. They're affordable kits at just over 100 bucks, so it's hard to complain about any shortcomings. Although I did end up replacing the hardware that came with it with some good grade 8 hardware from the hardware store, just for my own peace of mind. I decided to start with the rear first, given that it's a much more straightforward process. I simply need to jack up the rear axle, disconnect the shocks, lower the axle back down, releasing the coil springs. Then it's a simple matter of seating the spacers onto the spring perch, reinstalling the springs, and jacking the axle back up into place. One other item that I did have to purchase was shocks that were two inches longer than the factory shocks to allow for extra travel in the axle so that the shocks wouldn't bottom out when I'm fully articulated. After scouring some websites and studying all the specs of different kinds of shocks, I ended up ordering some KYB shocks for the rear end of a two-wheel drive Toyota Tacoma. They have the same top and bottom mounts as the Suzuki, but they're two inches longer, so it works out perfect. With the rear end lifted, I can now turn my attention to the front. With the independent suspension, this is going to be a little bit more complicated than the rear, but it's still fairly straightforward once you understand how it all works. Pretty much everything but the lower ball joint needs to be disconnected or loosened to allow for enough room to add the coil spring back in with the spacer. The struts and sway bar removed, CV axles as well, and finally the control arm bolts had to be loosened to allow enough droop to reposition the coil spring and then some trickery and finagling with ratchet straps to get the control arm jacked back into position with the spring in place. The first side took me all day to figure out the nuances, but by the time I got to the passenger side, I was able to knock it out in less than half a day. And with everything now in place, I have a slightly taller Suzuki that will struggle less on the rougher roads I'm sure to find myself on. Tires are going to be the most expensive part of this whole project and the most critical when it comes to performance out soft-roading in the backcountry. 
I spent several weeks trying to decide on what tires to go with. The one thing I knew I wanted was the Triple Peak Severe Winter Rating for extra assurance when traveling over mountain passes and any lingering snow on the back roads as spring comes around the corner. Just as I was about to pull the trigger on something like the Yokohama Geolander or the General Grabber tires, I noticed that BF Goodrich had just released a new lighter duty all-terrain called the Trail Terrain TA. It came in at a cheaper price than the renowned KO2 and carried the three peak mountain symbol. So I put in an order to discount tire and within a week I had some new rubber. You all probably know the saying, light bars before lockers. Well we're soft roading here so that's actually what I'm going to do. Not to mention, the price of a decent locker for this thing would cripple my $1,500 budget. So, we're going for the Amazon Special. A couple 6.5 inch amber light bars from Nylite. I had a 12 inch Nylite light bar on my Subaru for 2 years and it never failed me. So I have no problem spending $30 of the budget to give these ones a try. I chose amber because I feel like it really makes it easier to distinguish details on the road in fog and especially in snow. My Amber Hella 500s on my Subaru really boosted the confidence in bad driving conditions and I don't see myself not having Amber lights on my vehicles in the future. One of the less important mods I had planned was to install these wheel spacers. They would have given the Suzuki a bit of a wider stance and helped a bit with the new larger tires rubbing on the frame at full steering lock. Unfortunately, these spacers don't clear the new manual front hubs. We attempted to machine them a bit on the lathe, but decided to admit defeat when one of the wheel spacers cracked reinstalling one of the wheel studs. And that brings me to the flares. As part of the whole wheel spacer dilemma, I also noticed that I didn't like how the wheels sat tucked into the fenders with the factory flares. And given that one flare was missing, I actually decided that I'll probably just remove the flares altogether. And now for the most interesting and misunderstood off-road modification. Yes, I'm putting a snorkel on it. I thought this was a soft rotor. Are you plunging through rivers on your soft roading adventures? Nope, I'm not. And that's why I said this is one of the most misunderstood four-wheel drive mods you see on the internet. And it makes perfect sense why it's misunderstood. The name, snorkel, really enforces the image of deep river crossings in the African wetlands. However, the technical name is simply raised air intake, and the simple purpose is drawing in cleaner and cooler air into the engine, whether that be cleaner from dirt, sand, mud, or yes, water. For me, my main concern is the forest roads we have here in Oregon, particularly in the high desert areas. If you come and experience the OG Gambler 500 rally, you'll know what it's like to drive through hundreds of miles of baby powder moon dust hell. And when your engine is wanting good clean air, the standard intake drawing air from inside the wheel well just isn't the way to get it. So, it's snorkel time. Plus, I think it looks pretty cool. And there we have it. An awesome little soft rotor that'll be perfect for turning down those unknown forest roads and getting that little bit of a sense of adventure and exploration that I feel like I've been missing for a while since I sold my Subaru. And if you're interested in sticking around to see some of those adventures, go ahead and subscribe, and I will see you guys on the next video.